what you doing? What you doing? You jumped right up here in my lap. Yes, you did. Hello, girl. How are you? Everybody's only seeing the back of your head. Everybody's seeing the back of your head. Yes, they are. <laughs> what you doing? Huh? What you doing? Can you look over here? Can you look over here? <laughs> well, Coco and I have been hanging out together for the last two or three days while her daddy has been on a trip to run a race. And so, Coco has been a little bit needy when it comes to wanting Mama's attention. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. Haven't you been? A little bit needy. Missing Daddy. Yeah. He'll be home today. He'll be home today. You'll be a very happy puppy. Yes, you will. You'll be a very happy puppy. You're a sweet baby. So we have to do this for a little while before I'm allowed to film or stitch or whatever it is I'm trying to do at this desk <laughs> because she's got to be first. <laughs> I got to love on her first. That's right. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, baby? Let's see if we're done. Are we done yet? No? No? You sweet girl. You're my girl. Yes, you are. <laughs> I wish you could see her little face. Yeah. Oh, get your beard nice and smooth. Yeah. Thank you for the kisses. Thank you. You sweet baby. Yes, you are. Sleepy? Do you need a nap? You need a little nap? <laughs> All right, can I get my, can I show them what I've been working on today? Hmm? Can I show them? No, not yet. Not yet, okay. Well, I'm going to see if I can get this recorded. Uh, while Coco has decided to drop down and cuddle and wrap herself around my legs. But anyway, um, her daddy will be home this afternoon, and I wish I could communicate that to her. She's been so missing him. But um, today is the 31st of March. I didn't want to start my April 1st start early, but I have pre-stitching to do for a class. So yesterday, I kitted it up. I have six small projects to stitch. Two aren't so small, but the rest of them are small, very small. And um, we're just gonna learn how to finish them in certain ways, and so we have a small piece that we have to stitch so that we have something to fully finish. My, I can't show you the first one because there's not a picture of it. In fact, I'm not sure I can show you any of them. They're all the patterns. But this was a free design uh, from Cecilia Turner, and the name of it is Mary, M-E-R-R-Y. It's a Christmas design. And um, I stitched it up this morning. Here it is. It's got your little Santa cap, your snowman, your Christmas tree, your present, and your snowflake. And the word Mary, of course, every letter looks different. So cute. Anyway, there's my first one that I've done. So, <laughs> believe it or not, I have another little start and finish today. But um, that's a real small. That's just one of those things I have to get done for the class. So the next one I'm going to be working on is a little bit bigger. And all I have on it is the pattern as well. But it is a bee skip with a big flower above it, a bee flying around it, and then trees underneath it, 
like in a band underneath it. I'm going to give you a quick glance. There's the pattern. We are to stitch that. Um, that's the second one I'm to do for this class day. And then the third one I actually have a picture of. I'm so excited. I can show you. The third one in this class that we're taking is this sweater by Doreen Jones. So there you go. The little reindeer sweater. So those two are much more involved and I will be taking those with me uh, on my trip just in case I get a chance to work on them because I'm going to do them all on this same piece of fabric. This is a mystery remnant of uh, Lugana. I don't know the um, color, but I do know that it's 32 count. And we were instructed to stitch on 32 count. So it was to leave an inch and a half margin. I left a little more than that around my piece. So the next one I'll start down on the bottom, measuring up probably an inch and a half or two inches from the bottom. And I'll stitch that one. I may even turn it that way so that I've got all this room in here going down. And then I'll come down here and do the sweater on one of these ends. So plenty of fabric to get them done. I've already pulled my floss for all of them and put them in here. And then there are three patterns that are for another day and I pitted those up as well and they're all the same colors. They're a fall grouping and again I only have the pattern so I'm gonna have to just show it to you really quickly but um, here you go. So we've got one that's a berry, one that's gonna be a drum and one that we're actually gonna put on the top of a tin, you know, like the uh, Altoid topper. So I have some lamb's wool linen left here, and I, 32 count, it's just a remnant that I cut off a piece that I stitched, and I plan on doing the same thing. I'm gonna stitch my three things on this lamb's wool linen because I'll use the same color scheme, and that way they'll all match. They'll be a little set. One's going to be the berry that I think it's small enough to be like a scissor fob um, or a bag pull fob and then one is going to be um, I'm not sure what all we're doing with that one but three different finishes so I have that to go as well. So I'm going to put this away now um, go ahead and record my stitching in my journal and have that uh, ready but um, that means I have five left to do and I'm hoping to get at least work on one of them while I'm gone a little bit of progress anyway I have three other projects I'm taking with me and I'm hoping to get a little bit of stitching on them as well uh, we're gonna be there I'll be stitching in the car Monday and Friday those are our travel days and so I'm hoping to stitch for a, a large portion of that trip if I can because it should be daylight hours and then I'm planning on stitching every evening while we're sitting around and talking together as a group of friends so we'll see we'll see how that goes see how much time I get anyway thanks for letting me share that with you and that will probably be my last update for a little while there'll be a gap of time before I put up a video because we're leaving town in the morning bright and early and I won't have time to put up a video today and I don't really have enough I don't think for a video because it was the end of the month I've been stitching for one challenge and I only stitched on two projects I just put lots of stitching in until I finished one of them so at this point I don't know that you'd have enough to really make it interesting for you either. So 
I will try to get some footage while we're out and about, if I can. Now, I don't know that my friends want to be on camera on my channel, um, but I'll try to show you what things that we might be doing or places we might be going. And I'll definitely share with you my stitching. So, I hope you have a great week. I'm looking forward to seeing my friends. I've been talking with them as, um, as they're packing and getting ready today, wishing them a happy Easter and looking forward to seeing them tomorrow afternoon. In the meantime, everybody, no matter what you're working on, what craft you might be doing, please enjoy every moment of it. And if you're stitching, happy stitching. Hello everybody, welcome. This is Dina and today is Friday. It is the 5th of April and I have been absent. <laughs> I warned everybody. I, I let you know I was going to go away uh, to meet some friends in the mountains and that I did. My husband and I dropped Coco at Fred's house on our way out of town on Monday morning. And we went to the Sevierville, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee area. We had a cabin that we had rented with two other couples. And we were there until this morning. And we drove back today. We picked up Coco on our way home. And now Tommy and Coco are out for a long walk in the park because she missed her daddy. I got to stitch. I got to stitch a little bit each day. I tried really hard to stay up with my private bingo game. And um, when I got home, I checked all the Facebook groups to make sure I had all the acrostics. There was a new one, of course, that came out uh, in the Daily 30 group while I was gone. There were challenges that have been posted that I haven't even looked at to see if I can want to work on them or not because I have so much to do with my acrostics and my bingo and whip go We'll have to wait and see. But I think what I'd like to do is just walk you through what I stitched when and kind of tell you what I'm using it for. So the first thing I did was start on the 1st of April my new berry for my ornament of the month that I'm doing with my friend Dee and Lori and Donna. Uh, and this month I'm doing number 11 because it was the next one that I needed to do on my green piece of fabric. It'll be the last one on the green fabric. And so here is where I got to. I did stitch on it a couple of times. I started the first little um, piper the first time and stitched the whole piper. And then the second time I stitched two more. And then the third time I, I think I started the bottom one. But uh, I kept trying to pick it up any moment, any time that I had on a couple of days that I was gone so that I could put more into it because I, I want to finish it, of course, by the end of the month. So I will try to use it for prompts and things of that nature as we go along. So that was on the first. And bear with me as I put this away because I'll have a big mess here if I don't. Okay, so now, what's the next thing I worked on? Well, the next thing I worked on was a brand new start. So my brand new start was a salve that I'm doing with uh, the same group of friends and it is um, the Strawberry Fair. And we were to start it on April 1st and I didn't get to start mine on the 1st. I had to start it on the 2nd, but I did get 158 stitches in for my new start on the second, which was great. I was really happy with that. Um, so this is how far I got. I am stitching this on a beautiful Atomic Ranch uh, 32 count Lugana by the name of Parchment. And I felt like it was a beautiful cream and I liked I like the look of that. So that was my new start on my strawberry fair. You can see I started right up here and did this little border on the side and the two hearts. 
that are right here. So now I'm ready to come over and work on these two flowers. That'll probably be my next um, place that I focus. So I did get my new start. I am headed with the group. I just haven't had much time to work on it, but at least I got a little bit of it done. So I got the start in. Then I had a whip go call and I was able to use this whip go call on my bingo game as well while I was out of town um, because my calls in bingo, um, one of them was um, a whip needing attention. <laughs> And I felt like this one needed attention to meet my goal, my whip go goal. And I think I used it maybe also for my medium whip, which was another prompt I had. But anyway, it is a um, Brenda Gervais, it's Be Ye Thankful. And this is the one that um, I did a color conversion on. And you'll notice that mine is quite different <laughs> than this one. Mine is on a beautiful piece of fabric called uh, Jamie's Quilt. It's hand dyed by Stephanie. And so it's got purple and green and all in it. And so I've changed my colors accordingly. But I went ahead and used this for um, my stitching um, on a prompt for my bingo and then I picked which was I just did some of the border and just got started on the ring and then I came back on there and stitched on it again primarily today and today I used it for my whip of choice which was my bingo call and I used it for uh, whip go of course now I I have enough stitches in it to meet my whip go goal of three hours or 300 stitches because today alone I got 306 in there. <laughs> so I had probably already met my whip go goal before I started today, but that's okay. And then I'm using it for the daily 30 sal. I'm using it, that, not sal, acrostic. That acrostic is actually, let me tell you what it is. It is April Rainy. April rainy like rainy month um, and so I am using it for the first a in the word April and the a is standing for the acorns that are in this this uh, stitched piece so I had to get at least 300 stitches in it today for that a so it it really packed a wall up today it hit my bingo board it completed my whip go call for this month and my other whip go call this month I had already finished so whip goes finished for the month already and it's the 5th of April so that was great and then of course it let me um, hit the first letter in my acrostic for the daily 30 group now the second letter in my acrostic is this same piece and it is a P and I am using it for this pumpkin in Be Ye Thankful. That's what the P is for. So I've got to put another 300 stitches in this project, not necessarily today, but sometime this month, which is great because that lets me come and put more stitches in it because I'd love to get a finish on it. So um, I did stats today. I'm in a, a group that, that tends to ask um, ourselves how did you do this past month? And so in the month of March, I stitched 22,753 stitches. And in March, I had 12 finishes. I had nine new starts. <laughs> and I went from 17 whips at the beginning of the month to 19 whips. So considering I had nine new starts and 12 finishes, um, some of those new starts, I didn't get to finish. So I want to make a lot of finishes this month if I can. I've, at least some of these little smalls I've started and maybe one other of my whips that's ongoing. 
you know, like a bigger whip. Something I've had, you know, that I'm trying to get uh, finished over there before the end of the year. So I will go ahead and tell you, I want to finish my berry because I want to finish those every month if I can. I would also like to finish this Be Ye Thankful for Whip Go. I would like to finish my Strawberry Fair if I can because it is another smaller piece. And then I think if I could get enough work in it, I might be able to finish my Jingle Jolly Joy. I've got one more square to do with a snowman in it. And I haven't even started on it this month, but I would like to try to make that my finish from my whip pile, you know, my bigger whips that I have sitting over there. Um, however, I need to tell you, doing my acrostics today, I am going to have about four new starts. I could not come up with anything for the letter I. And I'm already using my patterns that have alphabets on them for other letters, like a W and a Y. And I didn't want to use them again for another letter and have to keep stitching the same project over and over again at, at the detriment to something else. So, I have it, unless I change my mind, I have it that I'm going to need to do a new start for the I, the first I in April, rainy, and I'm going to try to start a Sue Hillis piece that's going on the birthday mantle called Summer Treats because it has ice cream in it. And then there's another I in that acrostic and it's in rainy. And so I am hoping to start the hands-on design happy birthday because it has iced cupcakes. So I've got those two eyes in there for new starts. We shall see. <laughs> I do need to start them because I want them ready, you know, for the birthday mantle. And I think I have a chance to get maybe one of them finished this year, but it would be good to go ahead and get both of them started. And then I could get, you know, the next one finished maybe by the time it's next year's birthday rolls around. And I can add to that display. So that's kind of, that's kind of my stitching that I've done uh, over the week. We had a great trip. Um, one couple came up from Florida, spent the night with us Sunday night, and then we headed out of town together, dropped Coco off. We were just riding behind each other. We stopped at a lovely uh, little um, cafeteria in um, Cleveland, Georgia, or Clarks Clarksville, maybe. And I think it was Clarksville. And we had lunch, and then we drove on over to our cabin. Now, we'll tell you, this cabin we booked, uh, you know, through the internet, um, like you normally do, and um, VRBO, Vacation Rentals by Owner, and it looked really good on the internet, bright and, you know, spacious and, and well lit and really pretty. Had three bedrooms, three baths, had a bedroom and bath on each of the three floors. So we thought, this is great. There'll be some privacy. This is wonderful. And all that is true. But when we got there, the owners don't live in town anymore. They live in Florida. And they weren't able to come over and open it up or stage it for us. And so when we got there, all the blinds were shut, all the windows and shades were pulled and it was so dark in there, we couldn't hardly see. And they had changed their locks on their cabin and they only had one that had a keyless entry and they sent us the code. Well, that was the back door and that back door went right into a bedroom. <laughs> we almost tripped over the bed because it was so dark in there. Anyway, we got over that. We were able to accommodate, you know, and, and we went in and out the other door if there was somebody that was going to be in the cabin. We only had to go out of the cabin through that bedroom 
when we all left together. But isn't that kind of odd that someone would put their main entrance to in a door that goes right into someone's bedroom? We didn't like it, and we let the owner know that. We called him and told him, please give us a code to the other door. We don't want to go in and out of our friend's bedroom every time we have to leave. And he did oblige and give us a code to that door, but unfortunately, it didn't work. Anyway, <laughs> it worked out okay. But you know, anytime you rent something sight unseen that you've never used before, there are going to be little things that you have to adjust for, little things you have to make um, allowances for. Hi everyone, this is future editing Dina. <laughs> And I just wanted to let you know, I forgot to mention that one of the things about our cabin was that it had a lot of taxidermied animals to decorate. And so not only did it have deer heads, you know, in the cabin on the wall, but it would have, it had a taxidermied, I think, raccoon uh, standing on, in one place in the cabin. It had a couple of other animals up in the rafters, but the one that got me was the black bear. And it looked like a small bear, but it looked real. And it looked like it had been taxidermied, I don't know. But it was hanging in the top of the rafter, right above the door to our bedroom. And every night I had to walk under that bear. And I had this eerie feeling that he was gonna jump down on top of me. <laughs> I have a fear of bears, and so it wasn't comfortable for me. But after a night or two, I just quit looking up. <laughs> just decided I wasn't going to look up anymore. But my husband thought it was hilarious to have this bear above my door, especially knowing how I'm afraid of him. So he took a picture of me when I first saw it, and I'm going to insert that in, in this um, clip as well. But I wanted to explain why all of a sudden you'd be seeing a picture of me pointing at this bear. He's not real. I mean, he's not alive. I think he's real, but I think he's taxidermied. So we'll see. Anyway, um, that's it from the future editing Dina. <laughs>
for my sister-in-law and uh, give her a call and find out when it would be a good time for us to come down and visit because it's, it's a long trip. It's about it's about an hour and a half to two hours to get to her house, maybe three. Um, she lives south of where we used to live. And then it, you know, it would be one of those things where we'd have to turn around and come right back. And so, um, I bet I've got, first of all, I got to frame it. So I will be working on that, but I wanted to tell you what a sweet thing my friend did to paint Ginger. Um, so we did our crafting in the morning when we had the best light possible. I stitched, she painted, and our friend, our other friend sat and chatted with us and kept us company. Then we would try to eat out our meal at lunch because it was A, less crowded, and B, less expensive. And then we ate our dinners in the cabin, and um, my friend uh, that paints and I had made soups. We had goulash, we had potato soup, we had vegetable soup, and we had fixings for all kinds of sandwiches. And so the we would ask each, you know, spouse, what do you want tonight? And um, we had vegetable soup the first night, we had potato soup the second night, we had goulash the third night. But we had ham or turkey or peanut butter and honey or, you know, grilled cheese sandwiches. One of our, the couples brought some gourmet cheeses and twice uh, my husband had a grilled cheese sandwich because I had three gourmet cheeses to mix together. And on the second night, I think four or five <laughs> of them had grilled cheese sandwiches. I couldn't have one, but they did. Um, anyway, it was great fun. We had a good visit. Uh, my husband went down the uh, rides in the little uh, carts, I guess you would say, where you go down the mountain. Um, you know, and you, you have the brakes if you want them, uh, the alpine slide. He found two of them, and he went down one one night and one the next night. He couldn't get anybody else to go down with him. He was the only daredevil um, that was there. But um, we wound up going shopping at the Christmas store, and we went um, shopping at uh, the outlet mall one day for just a little while. And... Um, it was lovely. It was a lovely time. We played cards and just uh, talked and visited with each other and laughed a lot. And so a great time, I think, a great time for all of us. So um, I did get a couple of messages from some of you saying that you hoped I was okay because I was missing and put up a video. Uh, but that is why I was not here and I did not have access to do that. So I will probably see how much I have with the footage that was right before I left and with what I filmed today. And, and if I have enough to even make a half hour, I will go ahead and put it up so you know I'm okay. So thanks for checking on me. And otherwise, I'm gonna get back to stitching and I hope you do too. So have a great weekend. Uh, I, as I mentioned, it's Friday. My husband and I have several uh, TV episodes to catch up on on the time that he was either a gone for his race or we were gone to the mountains. So we've had, um, we've got a, a few videos we need to, to you know, check in and uh, catch up with. So we'll be doing that. I hope you've had a great week while I've been gone and I hope you're looking ahead to a wonderful weekend, especially one with stitching. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi everybody, welcome back. It is the 6th of April, it's a Saturday, and I'm here to share with you the stitching I've done so far today. It's about five o'clock in the evening, and I'm gonna be taking a break here pretty soon to fix supper. But I wanted to tell you what my stitching has been um, for today. I've been working on my Be Ye Thankful for prompts, and I had done 306 stitches on it yesterday for the letter A for the acorns that are in the pattern. You can see those here and here. And then I had mentioned that I had another letter that I had used uh, for that same daily 30 acrostic and that that was gonna be for the P for pumpkin. 
And so um, there is a pumpkin in here as well in that little container there, the plant. And so I decided last night, I was just sitting and stitching and watching YouTube uh, Floss Tube, and I just kept stitching, and I wound up getting 314 additional stitches in here. And so I'll go ahead and show you where I got to. I got the planter, or the bowl, stitched. I got this entire branch with all of the flower buds stitched, and I started on the pumpkin. And I just ran my thread out. That's why I got 314 stitches instead of just 300 stitches. Um, then I decided that was enough stitching for the night. It was late. I went to bed. And this morning, I had a new call that I needed to work on. So I started working on a video because I hadn't put one up because I was out of town for a week. And I've got it um, saving now, but uh, I was working on it this morning and I got a text from my friend Donna and she said she had needed to go to Hobby Lobby today and would I like to go with her. Hobby Lobby, she has one I think fairly close to her, but it's very, very small. So it's, she comes up here to do her framing. She likes my, my friend that takes care of me so well. She likes her too. And, and um, they, they've met and they like each other. So she said, would you like to go? And I said, yes, I would. <laughs> Tommy was out running. And so I took Coco for her walk this morning while I was waiting on Donna to get here. And then we went to um, talk to Mindy about framing. So as it turned out, I took my a sampler for all seasons. I had a frame here at the house that I think is gonna be beautiful with it. And I had gotten it at the ReStore shop which is a Habitat for Humanity shop, and they sell their frames there for about $5. And I'm so excited because Mindy's gonna pin it and put it in for me and put all the hardware on the back and take care of it for me. So uh, in addition to that, I took over a watercolor for her to frame for my sister-in-law that I mentioned to you that my friend Sandy painted for her over the week, uh, the week that we were at in the mountains. But my friend Donna had a grouping of three beautiful stitch pieces that she had done for her bedroom to get framed. And then she had a couple of other pieces to get quotes on so she would know just about how much they were gonna be so she could save up for that and, and get those when she's ready. Um, but while we were there, I looked at, I got picked up some floss I needed, and I talked to Mindy about my oval piece that I can't find the round, the oval frame for, and they're, they're not making frames that size with the opening the size I need, so we talked about a square uh, or rectangle frame with a oval mat, and she said she could do that for me. But she recommended that I go look at some thrift shops first and see if I could find an old wooden mirror um, that might be the right oval shape that she could take the mirror out and put my piece in as long as it's wooden, not plastic or some other kind of material. It has to be wooden. So I'm going to maybe take a round at some of the uh, thrift stores in town first before I go ahead and get the rectangular frame with an oval mat. But at least I have a couple of options, which I think will be great. Um, so when, once Donna and I got back, I finally got started stitching today for the first time. And I had a bingo call today. The, my bingo call today was a new start of choice. So I had two new starts that I had picked out um, when I was writing up my acrostic for my um, daily 30 challenge group because there are two I's in that acrostic, two letter I's, and I didn't have anything since I finished my little um, small gift, which was by imaginating. I had been using that for the letter I anytime I needed one, and now I don't have it anymore. So I decided on two new starts, and one of them is happy birthday. And the reason I started on happy birthday or chose happy birthday 
is because there are iced cupcakes. There are cupcakes with icing, however you want to say it, but the icing starts with the letter I. And I'm using that for my daily 30. So I thought, okay, this is my new start of choice now for my bingo. So I have just finished stitching 128 stitches so far in my little new start. And I took a picture and I just posted it in my bingo for today. So I've met my bingo for today. And now I've got uh, almost, not quite half of what I need for my acrostic as well. So I hope to finish that tonight and that will knock out another letter in the acrostic, which will be wonderful. I always try to get those uh, letters in that acrostic out as soon as I can because it requires 300 stitches. <laughs> and I try to do that early in the month while I'm fresh <laughs> and all the stitching is new. But I'm very, very excited about my stitching today. I'm really happy that Last night I was able to finish that second letter, which pushed that new start a little further along. And now I'm starting my next new start, which I want for my mantle for the birthdays in August. So that means I would like to finish this if I could by August. So I'm definitely gonna be using it for any challenges that I can. So I just wanted to come and share that with you and let you know that that's what I had been uh, looking at and working on today and how much fun Donna and I had at Hobby Lobby together. We, um, I have another birthday start that's going to be for my acrostic as well. And it is the Sue Hillis one that has the, the bicycle that says ice cream on it. And I'm using it for the ice cream. And today while we were at Hobby Lobby, we saw a bicycle shaped clock that I could take the clock out of and use it possibly to frame my piece. So I don't know how big the face is, the space is on the clock. So I went online and tried to find it and I couldn't find it, but I did find it on amazon.com and I found a bigger bicycle that I like even better. It'll be a lot more substantial for my mantle. It'll look really good. And there was one other little piece I wanted to tell you too. The bicycle is looking this direction, it's facing this direction in the pattern, but the frame was facing this direction. And so I went on to my phone and took a picture of the pattern and then reversed it and sent it to the printer. But the problem is the word ice cream was backwards on my new pattern. And I was gonna have to figure out how to flip flop all of that. So when I looked on Amazon, I actually found a bicycle clock that's facing the correct direction that I don't have to change my pattern. And I'm so excited about that. And it looked like the face on it was much larger than the one at Hobby Lobby. And uh, I was gonna have to do the stitch one over one to make it fit, I thought. So I've ordered this new frame and I should get it within about two to three days. And so when I get it, I'll measure it and then I'll know whether I need to stitch my piece on a one over one situation or whether I can do a 32 count and do the normal over two or whether I can even have room to do a 28 count and do it even bigger. Uh, I want it to fill up the clock. So however, whatever size that face is in that clock is what I'm gonna work toward. But that's what I've been working on today. Lots of calculating, uh, picking fabrics for these new starts. This one was already kitted, it was ready to go. So that's one of the reasons I went ahead and started it. Plus I'm waiting on the frame to know what fabric I need on the bicycle. So, there you go. Um, Coco and Tommy are gone for a walk. I may have mentioned that already. So, um, I'll wait to get supper really ready until they kind of either call me and say they're on the way home or they pull up in the driveway and then I'm gonna run get that taken care of. So, anyway, I'm gonna get back to uh, working on both the movie, getting it up, and also stitching a little bit more. So I hope you've had a great day of stitching. And I hope to have more to share with you tomorrow. Happy stitching, everybody.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. It is April the 7th, and I'm here to talk to you just briefly about my stitching so far today. Well, it is Sunday, and um, we have had a very quiet, restful day today. My husband went out for a run yesterday and hit a piece of uneven pavement as he was running. He tries to be very careful to watch for that, but one slipped by him and he tripped over it and he fell. And so he, he fell on his arm, on his right arm, uh, took all the skin off of his elbow. Uh, and when he fell, it, it um, pushed up into his rib cage. And so his ribs are very sore. Don't believe they're broken, but very sore. He didn't break any bones. <laughs> Uh, but he felt pretty beat up and he finished his run, but um, when he got home, you know, he was uh, pretty scraped up and banged up. And so he took a shower and we bandaged him all up and he's, he's okay. But when he um, went to bed last night, he didn't feel well. He felt really sore and uh, was hurting. And so um, he slept in this morning. So... I got up, I got dressed and ready in case we went to church, but I kind of waited to see how he was going to feel. And so I had a quiet morning this morning that I hadn't planned on having. So I put up a video um, and then uh, came upstairs and started stitching on my bingo call for today. And my bingo call in my little private bingo group is for my number two, which for me was a Christmas whip. So I pulled out my daily 30 acrostic, which is April rainy. And um, I've done the A and the P, so I looked at the R and it stood for reindeer for Santa's house. And I thought, this is perfect. I'm gonna do this for my bingo pull and I'll just keep stitching on it until I hit the 300 stitches so that I've also met my letter in my acrostic. So I'll remind you of what Santa's house looks like. It is a beautiful piece. And of course the reindeer are right here in front of the house that I'm talking about for the match. And I did 103 stitches and posted it for my bingo. Then I kept going. And I wanted to finish the color I was working on in the section that I was working on. And so I wound up getting a total of 391 stitches today. So I did all of this inside here that's been stitched before it stopped where the little brown eaves are right there. So I did all of the colors. There's three colors in there right now. There's a light pink, a darker pink, and then the uh, ladybug, which is a hand dyed, over dyed thread, which is the, the pretty pinky red that's in the background back there. So I am tickled with that progress. 391 stitches today, lovely. So now, I feel like I can put that away and I can pull out something else that I might want to do to work on. And one of the things I need to do is bobinate some floss. <laughs> I have run out of floss in my master set and I have run out of floss when I was kidding up my new start for Strawberry Fair. I didn't have everything I needed. And so yesterday I got floss and so today I need to do my bobbin my bobbinating. So I think I'll do that and watch some floss too. Uh, now that I've met my goal for the day for my stitching. And then after I get everything bobbinated, if I still have time to stitch, then I can get back to it. And I might be ready to start something different there. Anyway, I'm going to put this away. I think I'm going to bobbinate first and then I'll go back to stitching if I have more time after. I hope you've had a good Sunday. I hope you're enjoying your stitching, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody.